And on top of having fluoride in the water, then you go to the dental office and say, fluoride treatments in the trays. Or today they'll give fluoride toothpaste for people who have, uh, get decay on the roots and want to use fluoride toothpaste. That's 10,000 parts per million of fluoride in that toothpaste. When in the water now, it used to be they want to have one part per million, now they allow you to have four parts per million in the water. You know, and fluoride is, it, it, again, it's, it, first of all, and, and you know, I was in dental school, they taught us that, hey, this, this is really uh, phenomenal, this whole fluoride thing, because we're going to save the world with tooth decay. We're going to help eradicate it, which didn't make sense either. Why did you want to put yourself out of business? Because I'm going to water it, going to take away your livelihood. But the thing is, the fluoride, I went and uh, a dentist named Hal Huggins. Did you ever hear hear of him? Is it just a dental no, revision? Hmm? Does dental revisions well, he, in Mexico or something like that? Yeah, Dr. Hal Huggins was, I was exposed to him back in 1973, and he talked about mercury in the mouth. He was the first one in this country, really, that um, started the amalgam war. There have been a number of amalgam wars throughout history, but this one that started, he was in the forefront of it. And he got started because he went down to South America and he was visiting with his dentist, Dr. Pinto. And Dr. Pinto's father used to get people better by, by taking out mercury fillings in South America. And Dr. Huggins heard that, all right, and he came back and his father was a physician. And his father's best friend was a physician. He put a filling, this guy's first filling in his mouth. He was like 50 years old. For his first filling in his mouth, he said it was the most beautiful filling. He wanted to make sure his father's best friend he was like an uncle to him, right? And then that guy came down with leukemia. Oh my God! And that got him to thinking, and he started researching it. And he decided it's not good for mercury. And I heard Dr. Huggins, and he's talking about this, and I said, this guy's talking about fluoride, he's talking about mercury. I mean, you know, what's with this guy? But he, but he planted the seed, just like he had that seed planted in his head. And what happened was, a couple of years after I heard him, my dental assistant, her daughter, I put her first mercury filling in. She was four or five years old, and I put her first mercury filling in. And like Dr. Huggins, you know, I want to make sure it's just right. It's my, my dental assistant who I really adored. She was a wonderful young woman. And guess what happened to that, to that little girl? Right after, day, day, two days later after I did that, she had her first seizure. So that turned the bulb on, and I went to the medical library. We didn't have the internet then, which makes it a lot easier today. And I went to the medical library here at Yale and up at UConn, and I started researching it. And I found out Dr. Huggins wasn't so crazy. This stuff's in the literature, going way back to the 1800s. Soon after they started using mercury fillings, they started reporting all these, all these things happening. So, you know, I, I, I thank Dr. Huggins for getting me down this road. And uh, as Sandy will tell you, I mean, this guy, they, they went after him with a vengeance until he finally lost his license. And um, and the other thing he talked about was fluoride. Now, fluoride is, is a drug.